All right, so now you see that we folded up our ID attachment and got it up out of the way. And I've selected over here on for, for what wheel I want to use, the external wheel. And um, you see here I loosened up these slides and I've uh, swiveled this around so that this is approximately on uh, maybe a 30 degree angle. That's, that's the bottom here so that when I come in with my wheel, I'm coming in in a, str in a, in a straight angle. Um, so that's the bottom slide. You also have the top slide here, which I also loosened up. Oh, you can stay there. So you see how the bottom slide here is, is still on this 30 degree angle. And I can now move this top slide. Also, this intermediate plate here, you see it has these holes in four different spots. That's so you can put a bar in there. And this plate can actually be spun. Um, it's eccentric. If you, you can see from the, this picture here that um, the top column here swivels at this point. But I could swivel this bottom plate around so that the, the narrow part would be in the front and we'd be able to get a lot closer to our part. Or if you had a large part, um, you swivel this intermediate plate the opposite way and the wheel will be further back. So in, in other words, the wheel actually can do something along, along the lines of, of going like this. So you've got one, two, and three actual swivel points on this wheel head. It's uh, quite a lot going on there. So other than that, it's pretty much exactly like we just showed you. Uh, start it up. And uh, make sure that's safe. And then when we start our headstock again, and we get our table going here. Now, of course, if you had this rotated at a certain angle, let's say, let's say that this was 30 degrees, and I don't know that it is, uh, and you had the right angle dressed on this wheel, you'd be able to uh, grind a shoulder on a part as well as the, the diameter. Uh, so that comes in pretty handy. You can even mount the wheel on this side. You can take this off. You'd have to find the uh, accessories uh, online, possibly. Um, wheel guard and all that. I don't know if this is if this wheel guard can go on both sides. I'm not sure. But it's designed so you can put a wheel over here. Uh, again, for this angle head, a lot of times on an angle head grinder, uh, they will have the wheel on the right side as opposed to the left side. So um, we'll start this up. Then we start our feed. Over here you have a knob where I can set uh, a course in feed for rapidly bringing that slide from the back to the front. There's also a position for internal grinding so that when you turn the hand wheel in external uh, in a counterclockwise direction, the wheel moves forward. But if you set this to internal, when you move it in a clockwise direction, the wheel goes back. That's because if you're grinding with the ID spindle and you have a, a, a piece on there, a ring on there, you can grind at the back of the ring. Okay. So we'll start the feed. And that will feed down. And you see here is the dead stop. It's going to come up against that solid pin there and stop at zero. Well, that's as far as it's going to go right now. On this particular machine, there's no uh, automatic retraction. You basically have to back it up yourself. Maybe give yourself one turn or two turns, and then you can come in here and, and take your workpiece off. Uh, so there you go. That's the Brown and Sharp uh, Universal Cylindrical Grinder. Uh, 14 by 30. It's in great shape. Runs nice, nice and quiet. 
Electrics are really clean. Hydraulics are really nice looking. Uh, we'll have photos of all that stuff on our website. Uh, thank you very much.